we're going to start off this video by amusing ourselves by sending Winter down a water slide. Do you remember the time where Fallout was all about water and the scarcity of it and what it drove people to do? It's like a water chip in Fallout 1 or something, and there was a big water purifier in Fallout 3. We don't have that problem in Fallout 76. Water is abundant enough that we can make water slides. Life's pretty good for Fallout people at this time. G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a two-shot auto grenade launch with 25% faster fire rate and 90% reduced weight. As part of my new PTS approach to the Weapon Spotlight series, this one was a request. I'd like to remind everyone to keep it to a two-star maximum because I'm not going to sit here re-rolling the same weapon to get three exact rolls. I've got things to do in my life, and I don't want to sit down re-rolling the same weapon hundreds of times for hours, alright? So just a two-star maximum, just a first, second, or maybe first and third legendary effect, and that'll be good. Alright, so, we're in the PTS, which means the game is in a future state. It'll come to you when they decide to do an update. But I've noticed a little thing about the uh, two-shot launches. Um, they don't seem to be getting as much damage as they do on live servers. And that might be because these things are currently bugged in live servers, giving you double damage because the two projectiles and the two explosions. From what I've seen from my preliminary testing, you can see the little condition damage on that from that. Um, I seem to be getting a lot less damage per grenade. It's like splitting that in half, so that's not good. That means we're going to lose a whole lot of god roll launches at a two-shot, which is a shame. But that's not all doom and gloom, because now we can utilize the grenadier perk, and it'll actually work here. We've waited like two and a half bloody years to get this actually, you know, making it work for launcher explosive weapons. But, you know, better late than never, I guess. We're going to boost the damage a little bit. We'll grab Demo Expert and Bloody Mess. Got Ricochet, Dodgy, Evasive, Blocker, Barbarian. So very tanky at the moment outside of Power Armor. That's all we'll stay. We've got Fireproof and a Dense Chest Piece. So we don't have to worry about it blowing ourselves up with the increased radius of this weapon. That would be a serious threat. And now we're doing 576. I might cut back to a live server right now just to see uh, the difference. Because I don't think I'm hitting for that much. Maybe it's because I'm used to Nerd Rage. We'll see. Welcome to live. You can tell which universe I'm in because Miranda will be wearing the Grognak costume like usual, and it's the same damage. Alright, cool. Alright, so here we are inside of Fink Slaughterhouse, and to demonstrate the new ability given by a Grenadier, I just want to shoot a grenade. Yep, you got that explosion. I've freaked out a super mutant, he didn't pass the will check, and if I equip the Grenadier... Uh, it's more noticeable on Fat Man Mini Nukes, but you're gonna have to take my word for it. Let's begin. Got a dense chest piece, so I can do this and not have to worry about too much damage. So, with that in mind, there's no reason not to just blast everything. Okay, looks like we still can one-shot these guys. It's good news. I might be overreacting because I was using this thing unspecced in my preliminary testing, but if we can one-shot these guys, then... As far as I'm concerned, the damage is enough. And hopefully we'll get ourselves into a big room here with... I mean, this is probably not the best place to use Grenadier. There we go, we managed to pick up a double there. But if they're standing close enough to each other, I know we might have a shot in here. I keep getting them around and hooked and snagged on geometry. I'm not doing a good, good job at demonstrating the explosive radius on this. We'll keep on going regardless. Alright, so it looks like... Bugger off, would ya? It looks like that, uh... 605, yeah, okay. So maybe it is splitting the damage, but I don't... Maybe it's not, because they're probably just getting their damage soaked up by the thing. So 851, 692, that might be times two. So maybe I was overreacting, but I think a significant portion of this damage is being reduced by their armor. Which is, you know, to be expected, these guys are meant to be the final evolution of humanity. Uh, apparently we're all meant to go big and green according to FEV. I object to that, I don't want to be a big green monster who is very stupid. It's kind of a dead end because their, their genitals don't work. They, they go over this in Fallout 1 and the master, the blob man on the computer, he, he offs himself because he's a failure. Anyways, you know what, it's not a failure, this one, let's get to killing ghouls. Okay, so, so far so good. Managed to record this uh, during some daylight because I already had this weapon on hand and 
you know, was planning to do something else, but then I realized, no, this is the way to go. Just clearing out the deer so the ghouls don't get distracted, because what I'm going to attempt to do here is uh, bring them out onto the tennis court and see if I can all blow them up in a few shots. Uh, two shots, if you will. Meaning one shot. Don't worry, it makes sense if you think about it. So we've got Blocker. Uh, we won't take as much damage if we happen to get punched by these guys. And we could easily pop a stim pack if we're in super deep trouble. Yeah, it's alright. We've got no rads to worry about. We're actually... We sprinted all of our AP away. We probably got an AP penalty thanks to... We've got a fat fuck in here. Yes, we do. Oh, he's already dead? No, he's not. Alright, I gave him the taco. He got baited. Now, let's get the hell out of here, get onto the dance floor, and see what these ghouls have got. Oof. That hurt. Oh, got radworms. The most useless thing ever now. Alright. Now, the trick to luring them around is to not break their pathing. If you jump, you break their pathing. So, you gotta do this in a very specific way. What the fuck? Did you just see that one? That's a totally LS swapped ghoul. There, he's coming back. There we go. Alright, he, he's found his way back. That's good. And oh my god, look at all of these chumps. That one's stuck inside a water cooler. This is a, this is a shit show all around. I'm getting hit unnecessarily. The tick rate means I'm getting hit by ghouls that aren't actually there. You're experiencing Fallout 76 in its purest form in playing in servers that aren't in my region. Alright boys, gather in. Yeah. Too many of them. <laughs> Alright, the delay made that all better. Okay, the game's redeemed itself. I know there was a lot, had to sit through a lot of build up to get that, but I hope it was satisfying. It certainly was for me. I'd probably be done by now if I was taking this a little bit more seriously, but, you know, we've got to test out that explosive radius, you know. Maybe I only killed the weaker ones there and they happened to blow up thanks to far flung fireworks, and that might have uh, triggered the rest. But, as soon as we get adrenalized and everything, then we're good, and they've been reduced into piles of meat already. Alright, let's go and kill Swan. Not before I shoot that one. Alright, good to go. This is my Are You Not Entertained outfit, and you gotta, you bet, you goddamn better be entertained right now. Another good thing about having a gigantic explosion radius is that you don't really need to be super accurate this thing if you don't get the lob right. Not a huge deal, evidently. Oh, it's so good. Um, I wonder if these things will have like a PvP sort of meta when um, we eventually get around to having like the Fallout world servers and maybe some dedicated PvP stuff where legendary stuff doesn't exist. I reckon everyone would grab these uh, auto nade launches because they're just that good. Obviously, we we're going to be firing half of the ordnance per shot with this, but, you know, it's like the Gauss shotgun in Nuclear Winter, but slightly even more ridiculous. So, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Hopefully, PvP does get a little bit of, of a revival because, obviously, Bethesda figured out that um, the current state of PvP Nuclear Winter isn't working, so they're axing it unfortunately, and I'm going to use this particular swan as a benchmark to see what kind of damage we're getting in live and PTS. So the two-shot kill, 979 damage. I don't think we've got sneak criticals there, but we'll switch over to the live server right now, and we'll find out what we can get. Definitely not in shape to get any aristocrats weapons at the moment. That's okay, I can craft Christmas presents and, you know, mass open them. So, in order to do the same amount of damage, I gotta get my adrenal reaction to a point where uh, it would be equal. I need to get slightly under half health, and look how much they're doing to me. I'm just standing here and taking it. This is why we can play the game with 20% health, because look how long it takes them to do anything. I'm standing here, just hit me, bro. What are you waiting for? Are they, are they confused by my tactics? Because, uh, whatever. Alright, you go die now. I'm gonna need to get my adrenaline before we can take on the swan. And if I level up here, then that would be unfortunate. That's okay, we're about to level up here. Um, we want. Leave me alone, you dog starver. 
I'm not going to kill you purposely just in case I level up and have to restart this process all over again. So if you recall, we hit him and killed him in two shots with the sneaky sneak approach, which is pretty good. We'll creep in here. We'll go for a 95er. Hmm. Well, we somehow managed to get slightly uh, better damage in the PTS, and maybe there was a couple of other variables that I didn't calculate, or maybe my adrenaline wore off, but I think the, the performance on these are quite similar, so I, that's good. They didn't go nerfing anything. It's always nice when you get to use a thing from a future patch and it's not nerfed. The laser guns that the Blood Eagles carry, they're not going to get nerfed either. That's good. A little bit of difficulty rather than standing and getting punched by randoms for 10 minutes. Okay, enough dilly-dallying around. Let's go try hard sweat mode against these sons of bitches. Oh yeah, you're definitely out of here. That's a home run, as they say in American baseball. <laughs> I just witnessed him disappear. I was watching him on the corner of the screen, and uh, he didn't have a good flight there. He just sort of dematerialized. Anyways, there goes the My Alert Queen in half a magazine, and really throwing that leg very high. Excellent. And you can tune up your ragdolls in these PTS world servers, but this is completely stock. Stock as a rock, and you can just send them flying like that. My Alert King, we'll see about that. Myalurk dead and flying. Yeah, I'm definitely lacking this uh this ragdolling effect. That's definitely bringing the whole experience together. This is one of the more fun weapons to use. If you haven't messed around with it, you don't need a whole lot of perks to input damage. Just that and that is getting me the damage numbers, but then I've got all of these defensive perks, and that's for holding these grenades and then lock and load and uh bandolier. That's pretty good. So you could be a pistols build and just, you know, chuck some points in and then use that. So, I think in that way, these weapons are kind of versatile. The problem is the, the grenades, and although I can craft these infinitely, I mean, if I, if I remove this perk, I'm over capacity by a significant amount. So, don't do that. Don't get bogged down by grenades. Know your limits. But, well, that's him sent to the moon. You can see him. Right there, that's his head. We'll move on. Okay, as a quick reminder, um, the uh, launch weapons have a little bit of a quirk with that. If you don't hit um, immediately, sometimes you fire heat-seeking grenades, missiles even. They're lobbed, so they aren't actually missiles, but they feel like missiles. There we go. What you need to do is lock on and then uh, get a decent enough shot. And then we just uh, wait for the grenades to do the rest. Come on. We have concentrated fire, so we'll end up getting a couple of hits in here if we're lucky. There we go. Getting that bizarre residual damage happening. And now we wait. Now, obviously, bats in this game are a little bit cooked. They don't feel like dealing with explosive damage a lot of the time. So that's a hurdle to get over. But if you do that stuff, um, you know, if it works on little babby Scorch Beast, it'll work on a Scorch Beast Queen, which is, you know, it's pretty good. If a grenade launcher that deals mainly in explosive damage can go well against a Scorch Beast Queen, then that's, that's, that's saying a lot. You don't need to grind a month doing the same repetitive task to get this one. Am I right, Gauss Minigun? Fucking hate that one, I'll tell you that much. And, uh, despite having a heavier ragdoll... Yeah, you, you can't move the Scorch Beast, unfortunately. Which is good. It's an anti-griefing measure, because if you could move the babby ones, then you could move this the queen and you know, send her off the map, and then no one will get her loot. So, it's a good decision. Every now and then, they'll do something clever at Bethesda, the four blokes that are working on Fallout 76. Can we pull one out of here? A bat out of hell. No, but we can amuse ourselves by tossing the Scorched Corpses far away. Did we just slam dunk that one into the fissure? I think we did. Yeah. No? What about this one? Feel unlucky? We'll play golf with Scorched Corpse using this grenade launcher. I think I'm onto something here. Anyways, so 
I've been messing around in this video a little bit. Um, that's because the weapon is that good that I didn't really need to put any effort into making it work. Which is to say that you should get one, because it allows you to have fun. And fun is a dangerously uh, expensive commodity in this game. Sooner or later, when Fallout Worlds drops for um, console, you're going to need a Fallout First subscription to utilize it for yourself. If your friends got Fallout First, you can organize something with them, but, you know, you shit out of luck if you don't have a have the cash to buy Fallout First with, unfortunately. Anyways, on that note, two-shot fire rate grenade launcher managed to hold on to its condition fairly well here with uh, three ranks in uh, thing, and we've only used how many grenades. I actually didn't take note of how many I had before the video, but I definitely overshot the amount of grenades I needed, but yeah, definitely a great weapon, and this is a confirmation that it'll be perhaps even greater next patch. So get one. Don't get your quad fire rate LMGs. Get one of these, because these are way better, all right? Screw your quad heavy weapons. Two-shot grenade launchers. That's what you want. Thank you very much for watching.